uh, yeah, so thanks for, um, you know, coming and joining these and, uh, uh, and your, your patience here as we get up and running uh, with this here. Uh, oh, Merry Christmas, uh, David. Um, so uh, thank you. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, this is Advanced Webinar with Scott. Uh, we do it every Thursday, as you guys know. It's free and open to all this week uh, only, kind of, a, uh, kind of Christmas special here. Uh, and uh, as we try to uh, use this Discord, too, and get up and running. Uh, but uh, uh, when you subscribe to Global Plus, you get these webinars, uh, all the advanced webinars that start at 10 a.m. All right, so today we have Scott. Uh, he will be trading live. Uh, he's futures trader. You guys know who he is. Um, but uh, the whole concept here uh, is with the education that you have, uh, the uh, educational course that we put together, uh, to uh, understand these markets and reading order flow. And then we have the advanced webinars, trying to be very objective in those. Uh, it is about reading the order flow and uh, objectively applying um, uh, ways of reading the order flow so that uh, you can trade for any strategy. Uh, so then we have um, two different uh, professional traders, Wednesday and Thursday, uh, J Trader and Scott, and they will go through stocks and futures, and you can learn their specific strategies and their ways of managing their trades, etc. So we really try to um, cover all the bases for your education. Uh, and this um, uh, uh, chat room in here uh, should also be really helpful for you guys. Uh, we'll have other people streaming in here uh, uh, shortly, uh, so uh, in, in the new year. Looking forward to it. All right, so uh, you guys know who Scott is, um, you know, professional trader for uh, over 20 years. Uh, he, he traded the um, uh, uh, S&P E-mini 10% of the volume, which is just unbelievable, uh, the years 2002 to 2005. Uh, and uh, he focuses on both equities and futures, but he's an expert scalper with an innate ability to quickly read the order flow and volume within price patterns. Um, uh, here's Scott's information here. I'm going to put it right into the chat right now, uh, and uh, you guys should see it. So there it is. Uh, you can uh, uh, click on some of the links in there uh, to go uh, and uh, directly uh, uh, access his trading room, uh, his website. You have his email there uh, in an educational course that he put together that's on the Bookmap Marketplace. All right, so the risk disclosures, let's go through that. Uh, and then I want to mention one thing with you, Scott, uh, that we saw earlier uh, and talk about icebergs and get your, your insights on that. I uh, thought it was uh, pretty pretty cool to see on Monday. Uh, anyway, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo, paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. So a few things to unpack there. Uh, it is in sim. All right, uh, and the reason that we're doing this is not to, uh, you know, copy exactly how he's trading. Uh, that is, is, it's really kind of asinine to do something like that. Uh, you're not going to learn anything. Uh, learn how uh, this trader uh, is reading the market, uh, and uh, if maybe this is something that resonates with you. Uh, it is for education, all right? And also, simulation cannot accurately represent it. Uh, even one contract can make a difference with a stop run or something like this. So these are some of the drawbacks in the general disclosure. You should know about them. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessary. I'm sorry, an investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so uh, I'll turn it over to Scott in just a second. But Scott, I wanna show you this from our Twitter. Uh, we did tweet it out uh, the other day. Uh, the webinar that we, um, and here's the recording for it uh, here. Um, yeah, I, I, I put, okay, I put it up on YouTube. I'll, I'll show you where it is on YouTube as well. Uh, but you know, we saw 34,000 icebergs here in the S and P, uh, it, just unbelievable. I mean, it just kept hitting into them and they just kept on adding more and more and more this move here. It ended up, uh, you know, you can see it ended up uh, high for the day here. Uh, but let's, let's take a step back and look at 
here it is on multi days here this is a 15 minute chart this is an hour chart this is a daily chart four days here uh, we've rallied fourth day all due to um, I think uh, a lot of those icebergs as well as a lot of limit buy orders down here completely absorbing right below the swing here on the daily okay we're gonna t we're, you know uh, look at more of these uh, on higher time frames uh, Scott's the expert here on uh, the um, uh, stops and icebergs uh, he's got many strategies uh, I just wanted to point this one out and get also his feedback on it uh, the video is here uh, of the recording of the webinar uh, so uh, it's under selected webinars and the one here on the left uh, so uh, uh, anyway some really good stuff to see in there we saw it uh, and look what it the result four-day rally uh, I mean this is real stuff like it's it's uh, pretty pretty powerful uh, and um, you know I, I don't know if you would have seen that transparency uh, without some of the stops and icebergs in there uh, anyway enough said uh, Scott um, I'm gonna stop streaming uh, and then let you take over all right You can hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're on the computer. It sounds like you're on the computer uh, mic, not your uh, headphones. Or, um... I don't have headphones. I just have this microphone. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm getting a bit of an echo, but that, that's okay. I, I don't need to. I'm not going to be talking. So um, anyway. Um, okay. Let me... Does, does everyone see Scott's uh, screen? Let me see if I see it. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Everything's good here. Um, all right, okay. uh, take it away, Scott. Okay, so what, what day was that? I, so that was 34,000 icebergs in one area? At one, I don't remember what day. Well, it, was it wasn't. I mean, it, you know, when you zoom out like that, um, you know, we needed to show it uh, in the tweet. Um, I mean, it was like unbelievable. It was like a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, five thousand, you know, three thousand. It just kept and going lower. Too, right? Yeah, we're using cumul. We're it's it's cumulative. So I mean, you're not going to see yeah. like five thousand like necessarily in one shot, but may maybe on that day. Um, oh yeah. Uh, you know, it was yeah, just, Monday. There was nothing but cell ice as well, and they just ran right through it, and that propelled the. That was like the <laughs> the fuel for the move up. It just went right through it, and we went up huge. But yeah, <clears throat> um, it, right. So I actually have the flu, so bear with me. I actually had to cancel my webinar yesterday afternoon because I was struggling so much, and I don't feel that much better. So bear with me. I'll try to. I'll try to get through this, but trading's hard enough when you're focused let alone when you feel like you're dying so <clears throat> bear with me um all right so right now i have a couple positions on i have this uh, nasdaq long on that i as you see at the open we had a bunch of sell ice down here not a bunch but enough to put the trade on uh, that was right here that was 110 but then you had another uh, 255 come in so that's this black zone here I try to use black for my cell ice my little jar guy so that was that and so the way I trade these zones is when it gets an ATR average shoe range on a five minute I use the thinker swim <clears throat> average shoe range again this is all um, default on their program this is the wilders if you want to dig into it 14 period again I, I just use default it's fine by me i don't like screwing with stuff i don't like adding my you know i don't like making it artistic i like using basic stuff for things like that so i'm not like questioning you know if i made the right choice of as far as um time period blah 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 so this is just their five minute atr you can see right now we're up to 19.29 but at the time we were like at a, i think it was 11 points so this thing got 11 points above here i got on a couple points too late um 
So the way I'm doing it now is so that's 11 points. That was a full ATR that came back. And then I used to get in a half ATR, and I've been getting literally, I can't tell you how many times you can ask my room where I'll get in, and that's the exact high tech, and then we'll do that. So I've been now going three quarters of an ATR, and that's been working out much better. Yesterday I avoided two losers by just moving it uh, three quarters of an ATR away from the zone instead of a half. So SNPI size for <clears throat> cell ES. 706 contract. So anyway, uh, the way I traded that was ATR, retest, and three quarters of an ATR. Again, I was a little, I missed it by a couple points. And then my stop goes, uh, I've been, I changed this a little bit to a um, half ATR below this zone because once it, once it does this and this and this, you know, it shouldn't come back and get more than half ATR below the zone. So that was, that's my stop. Then now I just ride this thing, right? So the, the two exit points um, that I use is one, I'll get out of a half half of my position at an hourly ATR. So you can see that's 77 points. So I'll go 77 points from the top of the zone. You can see it's at 16.2. So at 16.277, I will get out of one no matter what <clears throat> because these algos, especially now, this, this week is just algo heaven. Their volume is terrible and they were just running the show. So you got a lot of algos that hop in. I mean, that are, that are running these markets and they love to trade the these ATRs and stuff. So, um, and fade the ATRs, things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, I'll get out of one there and then I'll get out of my other half of my position or the full position if I see an opposing setup come in, right? So, if I see like sell ice here and then it fails, then I'll get out of it and then I'll potentially flip and go the other way, right? So, the last three weeks in my room, I've been trading nothing but the volume setups without any kind of input from charts, um, structure, anything, even though that stuff's very, very important, especially when you can layer that in with the volume. I'm trying to show my room. S&P, I size for Excel, yes, 706 contracts. And you guys, that you can be a profitable trader. The, the, the simpler you make things, the better you're gonna do. And just trading these volume setups is all you need. And then you can imagine when you get them in important areas that they're areas that you deem important, you can actually trade bigger size and make that an A plus trade and so on and so forth. But you can be a profitable trader just trading these setups and not even looking at a chart. And what I did is I went back to my roots. So when I made millions of dollars, I was just looking at that. I didn't even have charts up. I was just looking at order flow. Obviously, this doesn't work anymore because it's so fleeting and size doesn't mean anything most times. Like it'll be, you'll see a hundred, then it'll come up there and turn into a 10 lot, things like that, just because the algos run the show now. But this is, you know, trading these volume setups is the next, you know, best thing as far as uh, what that versus what that used to be, right? It's the, the, the best thing right now um, that I, that you can trade off of. And that's all you need. You don't need to confuse yourself with 45 lines on your chart and, you know, um, different areas of, of the of charting and stuff that you may be questioning. You just, I'm proving that over the last three weeks that you can be profitable just trading these setups. So. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. Let's uh, get this drawn in here so you can see some sell ice coming in ES. Not that that matters. Again, and don't get confused like, oh, they're selling. I got to get short here. It, it's not. It's the area that is important. It doesn't. Yeah, you want to a lot of times be on the same side as paper because they run the show and they can stop the market cold. But when they're wrong, it's just as it's just as useful information as when they're right, right? So don't get caught up saying, "Oh, this is sell ice. I need to get short." Right? You can see the see these blue bubbles. Well, they're just buying right through this ice. And we saw this Monday, there was about ten thousand icebergs that they just bought right through, and then it just rallied straight another 30, 40 points. So don't don't get you know sucked into saying, "Oh, this paper's selling here. I'm got to get short." Right? And then you have people saying, "Well, you don't know what they're doing. They could be hedging. They could be getting out of positions, and that's all true. And you're never going to know. So don't waste your mental energy trying to understand what they're doing. Just understand there's two sides to this trade. Right? You got the sell ice, and then you got whoever's buying it. So when this moves out of the zone, that's where you, this is the fuel that propels the market either way. And that's how I trade it. And that's how you need to trade it. Again, very simplistic thinking, and it's very effective. Right? So that's what I'm." showing everyone in my room with the just trading the volume setups. So let's make this, uh, I try to use the yellow for stops, blue for buy ice and black for sell ice. We'll try to be consistent with that. It's kind of interesting, um, Scott. Are... It, it's coming back to the way that you used to trade um, by just volume, you know? Uh, I, I bet you it feels pretty, right, I did, pretty I did comfortable. It for... Well, it does because you're not you're not questioning every and I did it for my room, but I did it for myself too. Because 
once I started, I, I've told you guys this before, so I had that auto trader service where now I'm trading for other people per se. Like when I put on a trade, it mirrors the trade and puts it on for, you guys can find that on my website. But I just, I had a lot of things exposed in my trading game where I started making not great trades because I, I started to let my mind get in the way, right? It's one thing trading for yourself, but when you start trading for other people, you start to like question things, right? So my performance to start right off the bat, I mean, it wasn't terrible. I'm trading tiny, tiny, but still wasn't doing very well. And I'm like, okay, what, what's, you know, what, what's going on here? And it's because, you know, not, trading is 90% mental. So my mental game it was off, like, because I was worried about losing other people's money. And if you, tr if you are worried about losing and trading, you're going to lose, right? So what I did was I went back to my roots and I said, you know what, I know this is the most powerful thing out there. So I'm just going to trade this like I used to trade right off the dome. And I don't care where we're at in the chart. I'm just going to trade these, you know, conservatively where you get the ATR, the retest, the failure, I'll go long or the same. And no matter where we're at, I'm taking the trade. And I've shown over three weeks, it's been nothing but profitable, right? So I did it for, for everyone in my room, but I did it for myself too, just to prove like you don't have to complicate things. And then again, when you can get these, you know, so for instance, like this is a, let's see where we're at on this chart. So this is not a bad area <clears throat> where we may pause, right? I, you know, if I get a long setup, I'm still going to go long. But, you know, if you were to ask me chart-wise what I think in the, of this area, I think this could be an area where we stall, right? Why? Because, number one, this is where this entire move, down move started. This is called directional conviction, right? So that's very important. There's a reason this happened right here, right? So many times this, this is very, very important. Um, again, it's one of the four main areas of charting that I use, you know, directional conviction, buying and selling tails, right, stuff like that, um, tops and bottoms of balance areas, and HVNs of, of balance areas, right, so that's where the most trade occurs in a balance area, and a balance area is, again, just two-way two trade, guys taking, placing their bets. So this directional conviction is a very important area. It's even more meaningful when you have a straight beeline move in new important areas. And that's exactly what this, we've done nothing but, it's exactly what this is. We've done nothing but go up for 200 straight points right into this area. So this is somewhere where we could fail, right? So how would I use that information? Well, again, I'm taking a trade. So on this newest setup right here, I'm taking a trade regardless if once it breaks out of here. So if this does this, a full ATR or retest failure, I'll go long. And I'll go short the same way the other way. But I know this is a very important area. Actually, I think it's up a little higher, but this is a very important area. If I know that, I can say, you know what, this is an A plus setup. I'm going to put on more size. So I allot myself the way you should be trading is about you should be risking about 2% of your of your account size per trade, right? So if you see an A and maybe 6% for the entire day, you should never be losing more than 5%, 5 or 6% of your trading account in a day. But I can say, you know what? I love this trade. I love this area. I'm gonna allot 4% to this trade, right? You can allot 6%, but if you lose, you gotta be done for the day, right? And I'm not gonna get into that right now as far as, you know, you wanna, you wanna have a system in place for your broker when you do hit that loss limit, because you will have days like that where you just get automatically shut down. You're not, you're not about to do something stupid. Everyone knows my stories of losing millions of dollars because I didn't follow my risk parameters back when I was trading huge. So um, I lost my thought again. Forgive me because I'm fighting the flu here. Um, but anyway, I will trade this zone no matter what. But you can't a lot because this is an important area near that. Let's see exactly the price that was. I can four. 47.24 down to, yeah, we're right there. You can see we're right at the bottom of it, right? If I were to draw a zone, I'll draw a zone right here. Get rid of this stuff. I need to uh, update my zones here. These are not relevant anymore. So any questions, Bruce, why I draw this zone? Uh, let me take a look here. <clears throat> Huh. You can see even no. back here, this is important too. Right? Okay. No, no, just uh, some people having problems getting in. Um, boy, there should not be any limitation in the room here. Um, so um, I'll go through the settings again, but uh, sorry guys if you can't get in. Uh, it is recorded though, uh, but um, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll deal with it. Um, and uh, nothing, nothing for you, Scott. I was going to say, if they can't get in, they obviously can't hear you. Right. No, 
Um, or can they hear you? I, I think, think the they, screen they, thing they, might there, some, off. Yeah, the, so um, like uh, David, uh, y you need to um, click on, y once you're in that room there, you'll see at the top of the room, like, uh, you know, it says streaming or something like one of the persons says streaming. Click on that uh, and then you'll start to see it. Now, then once you're in that, looking at that screen, then you want to pop that out. So then you can also chat in the in the chat room here. So when you're in that screen, then uh, uh, in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a, a little, you know, white icon there uh, to click on that and it'll pop it out into a separate uh, window. So uh, uh, then you should be able to get it. Okay, sorry guys, I, I don't know how, why you can't get in. Uh, you should be able to get in, uh, but uh, any, anyway, um, I'll, I'll, I'll help him out uh, along the way, Scott. So sorry to interrupt. No problem. Um, so anyway, I just drew this zone. <clears throat> so you can see a lot of these areas can remain important, right? This was, we talked about directional conviction, but what do you see here? Same thing, right? We never made it back up there. We still haven't made it back up there until this, and then it failed again. So this is a very important zone. So what I'm saying is with the volume signals I'm trading, I'll go long here as well as short. But the better the better trade, in my opinion, is the short, meaning you should allot more size for this trade on the short side if it breaks to the to the downside of this zone. That's what I'm saying. So <clears throat> when I got back into the, you know, I was out of the game for like four years, 2013 to 2017, because I just couldn't make money, you know, before book map with these algos. It was like I was at best an average trader, right? My because my game, my scalping game went away and the algos knocked me out of the game. And I couldn't I just couldn't make money. I had to support my family. So I went into medical sales for four years. And when I got back in, you know, my Dr. Brett Steenbarger, the one who wrote uh, Nancy Trader Performance, he contacted me about book map and said, Hey, you might want to take a look at this software. It's pretty incredible and it reminds me exactly how you used to view, view the market. And the minute I saw it I knew I was back, right? So but when I came back I was going to just trade stocks because I was so I had PTSD from you know futures and trading the and S&P making millions and then having it basically just stop working my, my trading style so I, did, I didn't want to trade futures when I came back in the game and I was trading stocks so I, I studied for a while under SMB um, capital or SMB trading you guys for sure have seen them on the internet and stuff but they focus mainly on stock trading so what they would what they would tell their traders and actually they would penalize their traders so every day they should be making a playbook on things they saw in, in the market doesn't mean you're always going to trade them but um and when and then when you see it over and over and over and then that turns into like one of your main plays right so the way they would do it is they would have their traders name their a plus setups and then if their a plus setter setup came came about that day and then they didn't trade more size on that setup they would literally be penalized. They would put them on the simulator the next day as a penalty, right? So it's like, that's how important it is when you see an area that you love and you know it works, you know, 80% of the time and then you get your volume set up, that's an area where you want to be trading bigger, right? So that's where I got that, uh, that from. But All right, so we're trying to break out of this. Um, waiting to see if I get filled here. I'm one of these again I, I will hold I will hold the other one too until I see so say I, I get filled on this and it just keeps going up I'm not getting out my my last my second one until I see an opposing setup right meaning a bearish setup then I'll get out and then I'll then I'll flip potentially so let's see how that works hopefully I can get filled here I'm only about seven points away so um so we still have this we're still in this zone here another trade I have on well Let's look at gold first because this is a potential trade. So gold is very bullish. Um, before I jump into that, and we go over all this stuff nonstop in my room every day. We go over this this structure stuff, right? So, so you always want to know the bigger picture. But what again, what I'm showing is you can make money just with the volume. But if you if you're trading in the direction of the bigger picture, you're gonna and again you increase your size, you'll be even more profitable. So this market. You know, we broke broke down out of this first balance, and then we created more balance, and this is weeks, right? Then we had a fail breakdown. You see that? Here's your buying tail, instant rejection, and then we got through the high volume note of this, and that was a fail breakout of this mammoth, right? So that right there is signal, okay, long is the way to be in this market, right? Um, for the for your bigger picture trading, right? So we moved up here. We kind of failed, right? Where these prior areas failed, right? And then we came back down. All we're doing is retesting the top of this guy now all we did right and then built balance 
And then we came up here, built balance, and you can see what just happened here. And we'll look at the volume and what this really was, which is really important. So you see there's a buying tail here. That alone is bullish, right? Right here. So tails are very important. That's instant rejection, right? That's one of the four main areas of charting that I watch, right? I mean, you have a little selling tail here too, but and now we are right here. So this is about to become a failed breakdown, just like this bigger one was a failed breakdown, right? So, and I already want to be long based on what happened over here. So this is going to be a very good long, meaning I, I still trade either way based on this setup that's occurring. We'll go over that, but I'd much rather be long and I'm going to a lot more size to a long trade than I would a short trade because it's just, it's better in the context of the, the bigger picture, right? So that tail now, this is, the, this is really important to know what that tail was. What, what kind of volume was in there? Well, we had a sell stop run and you can see these, we call them snakes in the room. I'll go over this. These are sweeps. Um, wow. Some sweet street cleaners outside my window. Um, but you had a stop run here, <clears throat> and you can see 366 sweeps. You can see the stop run as well on the chart. So that was 270 of those were out of the 366 were just sell stops, right? So that's basically the retail trader puke, right? We call this a dumb and dumber setup on one of my five setups in my course that I exclusively, tra exclu exclusively trade off of. So that's this zone. See the 270, and there was some more right after that. So I incorporated. See, there was 100. When you add, add them together, it was about 224 more. So this whole area was a zone, right? And you see how it, it's instant rejection. So this is a dumb and dumber. The dumb money puke. There's no real follow through, meaning paper didn't step in behind it and push it. Because again, these big firms, they see the same thing we see, right? Which is pretty cool that we get to see what they see and why they always make money. Well, that's why Goldman comes out and said they make money 198 out of 200 trading days. Well, they have the same information. We have, I should say, we have the same information as them now, right? Not many traders can say that, uh, retail traders. So anyway, this failed immediately, right? And then we came up here and you can see there was a couple more buy stops. So now, we don't know what this is yet. It could be a dumb and dumber the other way, but I'm betting this is going to be a stop and hold based on what we just went over in the um, structure stuff. So this was a 204 stop run, and you can see the 305 snakes. I call I call them black mamba. This is the black mamba, and we're gonna I'm gonna have all new setups with these things. This, this is pretty incredible. We'll get into that a little later, but this this sweep indicator it's 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 pretty cool. Um, on top of, you know, obviously the ice, icebergs and, uh, and stop runs. So you had 200 stops here. You had another 128 stops here in the same zone. And now we're just kind of balancing in the zone. So I'm waiting for a full ATR retest fail and I will go long or I'll go short. Again, this is just strictly off the zone. I'd much rather go long based on what we just talked about, but I still will take the trade the other way. So what do you look at next? Well, you figure out the ATR. ATR is 16 and a half points, so you round up, I make it 17. So meaning I have to see 17, not points, ticks and not gold, 17 ticks. So I need to see 17 ticks out of the zone. So this uh, stop, I mean, um, top of this was, we'll say 68. So I need to see 85. I'm just using the last two digits. So I would, I would need to see this go up to 85. Oops there then I need a retest and then a failure and I will get in three quarters of an ATR and then my stop goes half ATR below the zone again I've changed that I used to be a full ATR but you know the more I do this the more I realize you know if this does if this does this this and this and I get filled it should never get back down here and cut more than half ATR if it does and then, then you're wrong on your on your play but um, so that's what I'm looking for there, or I'll do the same thing to the downside. Again, I hope it's to the upside because I can bullish this market, but I will trade either way. And of course, I come within stupid algos. Came within like four point, three points of this fill, and then it just swipes down 25. So again, you know, this may come all the way back and stop me out. I'm hoping that I get another setup and then I can I can adjust, right? But if this comes all the way back down and starts me out, then, then it does. But the only way you're going to be a successful trader is by following your rules. So my rules are 
half of my trade at an hourly ATR and or if I see an opposing setup. There's been nothing, so I'm holding on to this trade. And this helps you avoid the algos. Like how many guys say they were just had their, their offer right here and they saw this and they're like, oh no, I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get filled. Okay, I'm gonna chase it down. And then it turns around and comes back and does that, right? So you've gotta you've gotta have your rules and stick to them, right? If, yeah, does this feel good coming all the way back? No, but I'm I condition myself enough now where you know these markets 80 80 to 85 percent could even be more are algo driven. What do you think they're doing when this happens? They know nothing's going on here either. So when nothing's going on, they sit there and flip it back and forth to take your money and make you panic, right? So again, I don't worry about it anymore. I'm, yeah, it sucks that I just missed that, and it'll suck even more if I didn't adjust my. Um, hourly ATR, let's know, it actually increased. So I can actually put this two points higher now. That's another thing you wanna keep an eye on, right? So if this starts to shrink, you can move your stop down. I mean, your uh, limit order down. If it expands, you can move it up. So now it's at 79 points. So I can actually move this. 79. Because the bottom of that zone was the top of that zone that I'm going off of the full ATR was exactly at 16,200. Right there. So I'm going 79 points above there for my fill. And as long as nothing comes in, so don't get me wrong, if I see an opposing setup come in right now, so say I get like a, some sell ice coming in, right, right here, and then it gets half ATR below there, I'm out. I'm out of this trade. And then I'll look for full ATR retest fail, then I'll flip to short. But until then, they can now go all they want and I'm staying in this trade. And that's the only way you're going to make money. Because if you flip out every time the market moves against you, rotates against you as they say you're you're just going to be food for the algos that, that's it so you have to decide what you want to be <clears throat> um and then the other trade that i'm in here so i got long beans at the open so we had some sell ice to start that was before this blue zone you see here we came down you can see these swipes this was uh 300 and then you even had more in here. So it was probably about 500 sell, uh, sell ice in this zone, this black zone, right? So what I did is I waited for a full ATR. At the time, it was like a point and a half. We got out of there, we retested, we failed, and I got long, right? This came in and after. So what actually I should be doing right now is potentially getting out of the straight because this is a, yeah, I gotta get out of the straight. How we'll go over why here in a second. So I would have added to this trade if this, so you see this buy ice thing came in, right? You see 240, 200, 200, so it's 640, and then some sell ice all in this zone. Right? Actually, I should have made this one a little higher, but it doesn't matter because I'm out of the trade now. But I would have added to this trade if this would have held and we moved an ATR retest fail, I would have added to it. And then my stop goes a half ATR. So that's why I just got to, I actually missed this. I should have been out. A half ATR. So the ATR is 1.6. So half ATR is 0.8. So one cent below here. So I should have been out at 34.50. So I cost myself about a point a quarter here because this is the newest setup. This should not get a half ATR below here. If it does, then I'm out. Right. So now this is a full ATR. Right. Because ATR, what did I say was 1.8. 1.6. So this has definitely moved a point and a half below here. Now, if we retest fail, I will go short based on the newest setup, right? But again, when a new setup comes in and we penetrate or violate it by half ATR against my, if I have a position on, then I just get out of the trade. So I, again, I miss this by about a cent. Um, but that's my own fault. User, user error. But I'll be watching that to potentially go short now. All right, so we're still in the zone. I, I honestly wasn't expecting much for today. I mean, it's two days before Christmas. How many traders have? I mean, you can see here, too. One of the things I really watch, which you should be watching, too, is relative volume. You can see here. I mean, this is, I guarantee this is terrible. Yeah. I mean, look at this volume. So this is showing you that. So this is the, the Sierra chart relative volume, and it shows you um, basically just this exact time period for the last 30 days, right? You can see here, we're barely getting the half normal volume. Now we haven't gotten got to 100% yet. And this may be right here and here, but other than that, look how poor the, look at this volume is absolutely terrible. What do you think goes on when the volume is this bad? Who do you think is running the show? The algos, right? The algos know when there's no volume in here as well. And then that's when they do this to you, right? It doesn't mean we can't have sustained moves and things like that. 
but just be ready for this type of trade because they know that it's free reign today and this whole week, right? So that's why a lot of guys just take this week off. Um, I probably should have myself, but you know, you gotta, sorry, I got the, I didn't want to sweep my street today. Um, a lot of guys, again, just take this week off because it's, you're just asking for trouble and whipsaw. I mean, if you like whipsaws and this is, this is your week to trade, but, um, so just be aware of that, right? I mean, when you when you get volume like that, you need to you need to be very careful trading. But again, these setups are the setups, and this is still a decent. You know, for how bad the volume is, you still got the sell ice. We're in the zone. So my point is, we can just sit here for hours. Though is the problem, just because there's just nothing going on. Let's see if I actually get to fill here because I didn't let the algos scare me on the 25 point rip back down. 30 point rip back down. This is what I'm talking about. This is all. Soybean ice for buy ZS. 245 contracts. These are algos taking your money because you can't sit in trades, right? I have my rules. Here's my rules or an opposing setup, and I'm. they can do this for 10 hours, and I'm still going to be in this trade. Well, at least until the close. You got to you gotta condition yourself to do this, or you're never going to make it, ever. You're going to be just the food for the algos, getting whipsawed, getting frustrated. Let's see what's going on in here. Another 200 in this zone. I'll just draw this. It's going to be a little confusing because we've got like three zones now in here, but that is definitely threshold again. And, you know, I have thresholds for all these markets that I know what, what is worth trading, what's not worth trading. That's all my course. Yes, I indicator course. You guys can see on my website or book my marketplace, and it gives you the five setups, how to trade them, and the thresholds. Right, the thresholds are just as important because you don't want to be trading. I've seen that error, and you know, even in my room, you got guys like pointing out, "Oh, there's an iceberg. Here's a setup," and it's like, you know, fifty. Okay, fifty is not. That's not market moving. Two hundred is market moving. Right. That's why I draw zones if they hit the thresholds. If not. I don't pay attention, right? You don't want to be paying attention to little tiny blips in the volume because it doesn't mean anything. So that's that zone. We'll see how that trades. I'll come back to that here in a second. I want to see what's going on with gold. Any questions, Bruce? Yeah, I yeah. I, I was on. just about to jump in and, and ask. Um, so, um, yeah, Peter. Uh, so it looks like yeah, he he answered your question immediately there. Um, <clears throat> Sam's asking. Um, apart from the whip sign, is there anything else that you look at or for uh, in Bookmap to to identify algo activity? Well, everything is algo activity. It's I look for when it's not just algo activity, right? Again, when 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 a the algos are eighty plus percent of the trade. So you just have to look at it like everything is algo activity and you want to look when it's not just algos, right? Because that's what they do too. They know when the big money comes in and they either turn off the algo or they get out of the way, right? So you got to be doing the same thing. And that's what this information tells you, right? So when you like icebergs or algos worst enemy, right? They're playing their games and then they run into an iceberg and it's like, uh oh, and then turn they turn around and puke it. But, uh, you know, you have to view of all this trade as algo activity. Like this is 100%. There's been nothing going on. So here's a perfect example, right? Look at all these stop runs. Stop, 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 stop. None of these are threshold. So I don't even pay attention to it. If you pay attention to every blip, that's like just paying attention to every market move. You're, you'll drive yourself crazy and it's worthless. It's, you're wasting your mental energy, right? So that's why I look for a certain size to come in and then I'll trade it, right? But I don't, I don't pay attention to little blips and I don't let them scare me out. I have my rules that I've, you know, after years of trading this three, three plus years, two plus years trading the SI indicator, I know what to expect and I know what, what it should do, what it shouldn't. And I will be in this trade one until I get filled or if I see an opposing setup, right? If I see a bearish setup, then I'll get out. Kind of like you just saw in beans, right? Um, so, so Scott, another thing, um, just to <coughs> um, uh, tell everybody here, we're still work. I'm sorry uh, for this. We're still working on the hiccups in here. Um, if you guys, you can join. It's unlimited to join this advanced webinar voice room. Uh, however, there seems to be a limit or cap on the streaming 
uh, and that is 50. If you have that issue, you can see Sam is streaming also the same thing that Scott is. So you can view his, his uh, get another 50 people in there uh, at least. Um, so uh, you, sh you guys should be able to see it and hear it and then also uh, you know ask questions in this room here. Um, so uh, that, that was all Scott. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah, uh, another question in here um, about um, you say you trade for other people. Maybe you want to explain that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an auto trader program. So all you got to do is go on my website and you get information on it and you just fill out the form and they'll broker will tell you about it. But you can just go here. This is my website. Um, click on this. And you got to say yes. And then I basically... Scott's trading systems can now be executed through your broker automatically. So whatever I send to the broker as a trade, it automatically fires off across the board for all the my all the subscribers to my service, right? So I don't get any percentage of the trade of the profits or anything like that. It's just a straight 149. It's like a subscription, right? So whatever I do, you pay 149 a month. Whatever I do, you get those trades. Um, so again, if you got more questions about it, contact them. I'm not supposed to answer questions on that <laughs> because they. Again, they have certain things they tell clients, and as far as also the, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, compliance stuff, right? So I just defer to them for questions, but it basically I I fire off a trade, or I like it, I put in a trade, I send them the trade, and then it fires off across all the accounts. So uh, other than that, you know, you want to learn how to do this yourself, and that's the whole point of of these webinars, right? It's to teach you how to read this volume and trade it for yourself, right? The, the, the thing for the auto trader is a lot of guys are, you know, they're not sitting full time in front of their screens and they want to participate in my trading, but they don't, you know, they can't sit there like in my trade room all day long and put on trades. So that's what that's for. So, uh, but you're best off if you have the time and, you know, you can do it and you want to learn how to trade for yourself. Right, because okay. so that's answering uh, David's question here, but <clears throat> he's also asking, do you look at charts all day long or uh, set set up alarms uh, that indicate a setup is coming? Uh, well, you have the alarm, the voice um, notifications, right? So when you come in the sub chart here, it'll read like here's gold, right? So if if there's over 150 stops or 150 ice. It'll read, it'll read it off, right? So you can see right here, it'll read it and it'll put it here. So this is the alert. So you just go to get this screen, you just go to your, oops, just go to file, uh, alerts, and then that brings up this pop-up box. So in case you, because again, once you start trading, you're trading multiple things, a lot of these will go off and you won't even notice them just because they're happening pretty often, especially on an active day. But then you just got to scroll back and look, it shows you the time. You know, so you had S&P ice, that's the zone we're looking at. We had two different icebergs, one at 8.12, one at 8.14. That's what we're trading off of or we're waiting for it to get out of there. Sorry, the iceberg by ZS. There you go. 200 contracts. So that's my alerts that I know if my threshold has been hit to pay attention to, to that market, right? So we already have... So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of this black zone because this is all, this is the first thing... That's happened earlier, and everything's happening in that same area now. So I'm going to expand this because we had this. This was threshold 218. Now you see another close to 200 ice. So I'm going to make this one big zone, and we'll trade off of this zone. And I may be getting back in long or short, depending on how it moves out of the zone. But yeah, I mean, there'll be certain times where I'll, you know, for instance, like this zone right here, I'll put alerts, thick or swim, you can do this, right? I can say, all right, hey, if this gets here, create an alert, at or above. There you go. So now if it touches that price, it'll make a sound. It'll also text me, my phone. Um, then I know, hey, we're at that area. But that's, that's pretty much all I use, that and then the voice alerts. And then they also have this Telegram feature. I still have to have Bruce teach me how to use it. Um, but you can see here, you can get the, um, actually it's the on chart one. You can have it, literally it'll text you, email you, whatever you want when you get the thresholds that you set on the on chart information. So you have on chart icebergs, that's this stuff here. And then I and then you have the sub chart, which shows you pretty much the same stuff down here, right? 
but you can see a lot of times if it's the same house, the same entity that is the entire iceberg, right? So like this one was 194 executed, fully executed, then another 200 came in. Oh, this is the buy ice. You can see the selling ran into the buy ice. So two different, this could be the same entity too, but a lot of times you'll see like, it'll just say T and then T and then it'll be like another 200 T and then another two, and then it'll finally say like executed and then it's like all it does is add, up, add these all up and it'll be like, you know, 1400. So when you see the E's, you know, that's when it finally executed. But you got to be careful on that because a lot of times people will see, let me see if I can find an example. They'll see the E. Um, let's see if these algos will let me get filled. Stupid algos. Um, a lot of times you'll see the E and it happens way after the fact. You don't want to get fooled by that. That's why I use the sub, meaning it's like spread out, right? I like market moving. Let's see if we can find an example here. I like concentrated size, right? I don't want to see why oh, well, this isn't firing off. Let's see. Sure. Five hundred. Let's make this less for a second. See if that we'll get into these sweeps here in a little bit too, but so this is the synthetic icebergs. Um, we'll get into that too. That's I don't want to confuse you guys, but I don't know why it's not showing me uh, the icebergs on the chart there. But my point is, if you see, so say this comes in, and a lot of times it'll show, cause the whole reason you're not seeing on chart because nothing's firing off. But you'll see transacted 100, T100, and then it's like half hour later, T100. So this is the same house. So it, say it keeps testing that area. Say this is buy ice, right? And it keeps testing, testing. Well, someone's there with a lot of size, but I don't look at one test as my, so when it finally executed, it'll say, you know, say 1500. Well, that doesn't mean it was 1500 right then, right there. It means it's adding up all the ice that came in over the last half hour. You got to be careful on that because again, I like, that's why I like using this because I like to see spikes with concentrated volume, not, not over a long period. You want to pay attention to that, but I don't trade, I trade off the, off the sub chart is what I'm trying to say. All right, let's see if they're algorithmic. You can do it. <laughs> it's almost like they know my orders right there. Let me make sure I'm still at 79. Some people have to play their little games. Movie. Movie Bruce. And, and I know you're going to guess it. Oh, it's I, I actually, time. no, you know what is it, funny? Is, it? It, I, um, uh, it, it was uh, Al Pacino. Hola. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's it's. He was, it's, he was talking to Al Pacino. It was the senator. Ah, right, right. It was the senator. It was the senator. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he was trying was, to bribe Michael, and he said, "Senator, I'll give you my answer now if you like." I offer is this: nothing, not even the fee for the gaming license, which I appreciate you put up personally. <laughs> wow. So that's what that's for. I'm telling you, you got to keep a sense of humor in this game, or you will go crazy. And then I just got oh, so you know what I just did there? I do this all the time. Moron. There you go. I'll put it in. I'm surprised someone didn't. My room warns me about this all the time. I'm colorblind, but I still didn't. I meant to have that as an offer. I put it in as a bit. So I'm glad I got out of that. But So I should have been filled a little higher. So I put it in as a bid where I stopped into a, a long. You, you were filled. You were filled there. One. Well, no, because I, 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 I bought Whatever. another one. No, that's the sell. The, the pink. The, 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 no, um... Look. So I put this in as a bid instead of an offer. So it just gotcha, shows you. Gotcha. I've been trading for 20, yeah, 20 yeah. plus years. Yeah, gotcha. And I still make stupid mistakes like that. Yeah, so yeah. I meant to put that in as an offer, and I put in and I bought more instead of getting out. I, thank God I caught it. I'm glad I was on the screen because then I got out of the one, and then the other one I cost myself a couple points. Not a big deal. But the point is, and you can see the little snake here, the black mamba. There's the sweeps. Got filled. And guess what? I didn't let the algos beat me on their nonsense, right? How many guys say had yeah, there's, you know, a limit offer up there for whatever reason and then just got the algo? This means nothing. Does it mean it can't come all the way back? Absolutely not. It could definitely come back, but you got to make a decision. Are you going to have your rules and follow them or are you going to be algo, right? And I'm, I'm, I don't let them algo me. I know what worked. I know where if this is a correct setup, I know it should 
with the size that's involved in the setup, that this should go an hourly ATR minimum. That's why I get out of half at an hourly ATR. And then I will hold this until I get into posting setup. And that means this thing can go, I, I had this like three or four times in the last couple of weeks where I'm showing the guys just trading off the volume. This could go another 300 points before a setup com comes and I'm holding the trade. I'm not getting out, right? So that's how I trade it and it, and it works. So that's what I do. Just make sure you put your orders on the right side of the order book and not be an idiot like me sometimes. You always gotta be paying attention though because it's very easy to make mistakes. Very easy to make mistakes. And for instance, I, my other account, I, I was long two soybeans over the over the overnight, and I didn't even realize it. I brought up my my other um, trading dome today. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm long too. And of course, it was a loser because they're never winners when you make mistakes. But the point is, you can't. You got to stay on top of, the, of your game. Did you did you make mistakes like it's that when you, when you were trading uh, massive size? No, because I, I was in and out all day. Like I I would only day trade. Um, and I, I was just I was just flipping the order book you know, the entire time. So now I and I we had I had my PL. Even though again I would when I finally took off, like I tell you guys, so I had the PL down here, when I finally started making millions of dollars, I turned Detroit my PL sells yes. <clears throat> I turned my PL off and I just started trading and then at the end of the day I would look at my PL and so many times like yeah, when you first first couple trades you kinda know where you're at, but trust me, you start concentrating and you're just trading setup, 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 setup you lose track and then you look at it and it's like, there'd be days I'd pull it up. I'd be up like, you know, 180,000, stuff like that. And it's like, oh, I guess I did well today, right? But this is this is another secret of how you make money trading. You cannot be watching your P&L tick up, up and down. That's what these algos want. And that's what well, most people don't make money. That's why you wanna have a stop loss with your brokerage where, you know, if you are losing, you try not to look at your P&L. And if you hit it, you just get shut off by your broker. You don't even have to look at your P&L, right? So, if you, if you can do that, again, and that takes conditioning too. You gotta, it takes training to, to be able to, to turn that off. But I promise you, if you turn it off, it'll be where you turn the corner and take off as a trader, 100%. Make, makes total so sense because break. because then you're you're focusing uh, um, on trading correctly. Right, you're just trading, you're trading your, your, your setups. You're not worrying about the money. Like that's why most people can't make money. They don't make money trading because they're focused on the money. You can't be focused on the money. You have your, your stop losses in place for the day and whenever, and you just trade and just trade and trade your setups, follow your rules. You're not basing it off your money. If you base it off your money, you are not going to make it. Take it from me. I can't tell you how many people I saw. You know, and the other thing I see people do it too, which is a complete, it's, to this day, it's ridiculous. I still see it in some of the rooms and stuff. Oh my, you know, I hit my, hit my profit goal. I'm done for the day. It's like, what? what? Like if you're seeing things clearly, you should be sitting at that computer the entire day. It's when you're not seeing things clearly, you should get up and go. You don't make a certain amount and be done. Like that's, I'm not kidding you. This is what would go on in my trading firm. When I first started, I'd see guys, again, it was like printing money when it first, this stuff first came to the screen, especially like NASDAQ and stuff. Guys would make five grand and they turn off their computer and they go sit in the game room, play the, for the next three hours and play video games. It's like, well, if you can make five grand, why would you not stay and try to make 10? If you can make 10 grand, try to make 20. Like, yeah, you want to have a stop loss if you start to lose back. I'm not saying, you you know, you go up $5,000 or whatever amount you, you deem that I'm uh, done for the day, right? If you go up five grand, then you say, you know what, if I give back a thousand, then I'm done, right? You'd be shocked at how many times, especially when you're seeing things clearly, you'll have these $10,000, $15,000 days where you never give back the thousand. But just to make 5,000 or whatever whatever you're happy with for a day, and some people are like 500. Well, if you can make 500, why would you not want to make 1,000 or 2,000? Like don't, when you're, we all know there's certain days these markets are just strange. Like Monday was a perfect example I was talking in the room. It was because the volume was so light. It was just a weird, weird trading day, right? There's some days where you're just watching the markets. You're like, I, I don't know what this is. Like, this is not making sense. This is not what I'm used to seeing, right? So it's like, those are the days where if you lose, then you're done. When you're seeing things clearly, do not get up from your screen. Like, why? That that you want to take advantage of those moments, not be. Oh, there's my 500 bucks done for the day. That that's the dumbest. To this day, I cannot believe when people say that. To, I just can't believe it. Uh, but that's what most people did in my firm. Not most, but a, quite a few. And those were the first guys out the door when, 
you know, when it started to get getting more difficult to scalp and stuff like that, you know, with the order book and stuff that they were doing, they were the first guys fired because they just didn't have the P and L to back up any kind of um, drawdown, right? So, the number one thing you should from t for today, the number one rant thing that you should take from this webinar is, if you are seeing things clearly, I, do not get up if you hit your profit target for the day set a stop to lose back so again if you're a 500 and you get back say okay i'm gonna risk if i lose 200 bucks more back and then i'm done fine but don't get up when you're seeing things clearly it makes no sense to me all right so we're waiting for this thing to break an atr out of here um <clears throat> 3.68 so three three and three quarter point top of this zone was 17 1775 so 2150 i need to see to get long meaning I need to see 2150 price. I want to see a retest and I want to see a failure. I'll get in at three quarters of an ATR and then I'll be long. You know, what I tell my room all the time is, you know, I'm just trading these zones for the last few weeks very conservatively, but there's going to be times, like there was a couple times yesterday where you get your setup, like there was one in uh, ES, there was a stop run. Actually, it was a dumb and dumber when we pulled back to the low yesterday. Uh, actually, I'll show you right here. I think I got it. Let's see. Yep. So right here. Came down, swiped down. Dumb and dumber. We had the stop run, it was 458, but it was, there was some swipes and stuff. So it was definitely, threat. there was one right after this too, but that's this yellow zone. And it just, again, dumb money puke, no follow through, gone. So that's what I'm saying. Like there's gonna be times where you don't get the retest. You have to determine that as a trader. Hey, is this an area I wanna be aggressive and take first break, half ATR break out of the zone? You have to determine that yourself. Like, you know, what I say in every webinar is this is the science, right? There's art and science. This is the science. There's no disputing this, these icebergs in this area, right? What the art is, is how you trade these zones. You may not like, hey, you know, I don't wait for an ATR retest fail. I, the minute we break out of that zone, half ATR or whatever you decide, that's when you like to get in, that's fine. Then do that. that. That's your prerogative as a trader where you may wanna, you know, you may wanna uh, design this more for how you like to trade, okay? My way is one way. You, you know, you can trade these any way you want. This is not up for questioning, right? This zone is the zone. How you trade the zone is up to you. Right. So, again, if this is an area you want to be really aggressive, it, this may not retest for me to get long. You've got to accept that and decide how you want to trade them. The one thing you can't do, though, is one time take it aggressively and then another time you you, you say, uh, I'm going to wait. And, you know, that's when you start to you know make mistakes and question yourself. Be consistent. Right. Just like this trade in NQ that I'm still in. I was a consistent. You saw me besides this putting in the wrong side of the order here. You saw I didn't let these algos freak me out, right? I'm consistent. I waited for my hourly ATR, and I'm still in this trade, a one lot, until I see an opposing signal. That's consistency. There's nothing going to change that, right? I'm not going to say, ah, you know what? I don't feel like this can go up anymore. You know, this, this doesn't feel right. No, I have my rules, and I trade my rules. What do you think algos are? Algos aren't trading by feeling. Algos are input, have the information inputted to them by humans. And that's why they're, they're there because humans make emotional mistakes all the time, right? So the algos don't, they don't say, ah, this doesn't feel right. Yeah, I don't like that red bubble. No, they follow the rules and they get out, and get in based on the set rules, not on their emotions. And that's what I'm, that's what I do in my trading or, or the best I can. You know, once, once in a while I'll make a stupid mistake, but I'm pretty conditioned not to, Again, besides putting orders in the wrong side of the order book, that's, you know, that's what you learn in your first day of trading, but I still do stupid crap like that. But other than that, I'm pretty disciplined and play, playing my setups, and, you know, and that's why I make money. Any other questions, Bruce? Uh, a few, but that was a good rant, though. <laughs> Thanks. Pretty good, <laughs> considering I have the flu, too, and I feel like my head's going to pop off. Yeah, yeah, no, you you got plenty of energy. Um, so um, you, you started off slow. That's, that's three cups of coffee. Three cups of coffee. That's um, one. Let's see here. Um, a few different questions. Um, you know, we've got new new traders in here. So um, uh, 
yeah, um, uh, Amar, yeah, he's 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 uh, you know kind of um, making these horizontal lines that kind of match uh, the uh, spikes uh, there that he wants to look at. Um, and right. uh, so, you, so you come in here just quickly, so you watch where this stuff comes in, right? So you had this first stop run or this first sell ice here. It was pretty close to yeah, 750. I use 700 as my threshold. So just this alone, this spike here would have been drawn. So all you do is you find out, you come to your little crosshair here, and you find out where that started, right? So go to where this spiked, and you draw it. This might be a little too low. Should have been up here. We'll do that, actually. So you draw this right where it spiked. Right? And then you incorporate all the prices in that spike, right? So this this originally stopped right here. So my zone would have originally been there. See how this stopped coming in right at this price. So I would have drawn my zone there. But I, I increased it because you had this that came up to there. You see where the spike stopped. That was there. And then you had more come in up here. So you see right there, it's where it's dissipated. And I drew the zone at the the high price so this was the high price of this zone right it came back down but this this price right here was still in this spike so that's where i dropped through the top of the zone so there you go you have again 750 six six thirty that's almost 1500 this is almost 2000 sell ice in this zone right and that's what i trade off of and then i wait again so now we're about to get the full ATR out of here. I think we already did. What did I say? ATR is 3.66. So 21.75. It's 21.50. It's 3.75, right? So we got there. Here's your retest. So again, they retest these zones 80% of the time. Crude is even more. I'd say 90% of the time. Oops. So if this comes within... Yesterday, I actually cost myself a trade in my trading room. I, and when I looked at it after the after I got off, I actually missed a huge trade. It was a 25-point winner. And yes, it came up, came to within the top of the zone. And I said, I want to see, you know, two ticks away. And it was like, I thought it was four, and I didn't put it on. And I, when I expanded my, my chart, it was, it was two ticks away, and I should have been long. So anyway, when it comes back, you know, a lot of times it'll come, like, right close to the zone. And then go so just you know two ticks two three ticks it's fine right so 1775 so if this comes up to you know i'd say it comes down here it starts to run away i will get in it doesn't have to be the exact zone you give yourself a little you know two three tick allotment many times it'll come right back to it though so if that happens then i want to be in three quarters of an atr right so half an atr we'll just let's just use four to make it easy half atr is two and then Another half of an ATR, half of a half, because I'm doing three quarters, is three points. So meaning, we didn't get right there. Yeah, this is four. I don't use four. That was That's not close enough for me. But if this comes within two or three ticks of this zone, then I go three points above this zone for my entry. So I'll be in at 20 and a half. I may miss this. You know, you, you got it, but you got it. I'm just consistent with what I do. I mean, if this does this did not come back and retrace and get within two or three ticks i'm not getting in the trade because i'm waiting again for the experiment that i'm doing with my room i'm waiting for full retest that's not a retest yet so does that mean it can't do that absolutely not i just showed you one that did that yesterday that didn't even come back this much and it just takes off so that's tc 190 contract that's what you have to decide as a trader how aggressive you want to be so i'm still waiting for a retest of that zone i'll probably get it and now know. we also know we have some all right more so again i was waiting to trade here. this zone and actually this Hopefully is something we cover all the time here. in here and this is why it's going up uh, no atr is 15 15 ticks so we never got 15 ticks above here we got like eight now we're 15 ticks above here, but now you got a new setup. So now we're going to trade off of this setup because it's the most recent one, right? So again, that's what I'm talking about. Like we talked about how, why you wanted to be, why gold looked really bullish. You could, you could have said on this, on this stops, we just went through this earlier. The minute it breaks a half ATR, you're in, you're not waiting for retest because you're now you already cost yourself because it has didn't, never retested, never went an ATR and retested. So that's what you have to determine on your own and how you want to trade the zones. You want to trade them aggressively or do you want to wait for retest failures, right? So let's try.
draw this up. So this is, for example, how you draw these, right? So this is where this spiked. Like you can see it right here, and you can see the on chart as well. You can see the red line. So that started right at this blue bubble. So I'll draw my bottom of my zone there, right? And then I go and I see where it stopped, which is basically the same here. See, this is where it dissipated, right about here. But you you need to incorporate all the prices that came in, right? So that puts my puts me up here. So that's that zone of uh, the stop run that just fired off. I'm gonna make it a different color because the other one's white too, and I don't want to confuse it's myself. Understanding beige, whatever color that is, and then. All right, so now this is the newest zone. So I will trade this either way. I prefer it be long because of what I said, but you know, if this goes 15 ticks below retest failure, I'll go short. Again, yeah, I know this is here, but this, this just occurred. Or I much prefer 15 ticks retest failure to go long. So we'll see on that. But like I said, you could have been right when I break out of this zone, you'd already be long if you like to play aggressively. I, ha I have been aggressive, but again, what I'm doing for this pretty much a month, it's going to be a month by the end of the year, is I'm just taking only conservative retest failures. So like this one, I may miss. This did not get, this was a full point away from the top of the zone, so I'm not, that's too far for me. I mean, I'm still on this too, so got that going for me, which is nice. Movie. Movie. I was waiting for it. Caddyshack. Very nice. Yeah, someone probably typed it in, you cheater. <laughs> no, no, I, you you schooled me on that many months ago, like a year or two ago. Yeah, um, I used to say. I mean, I only have like four four movies in my in my brain. Like, you're gonna learn most of the most of the quotes after watching me a hundred times. All right, let's see what's going on in here. So I'm broken out of this newest zone and beans. I will. I'm just waiting for. Oh, and by the way, we didn't really talk about this. This is just tick strike. Um, my website, if you go on there, you get discounts to that as well. Everything on my website, there's discounts. So if you click on where it says Scott, even my room don't even know that. Doesn't even know that, I should say. They're like, what? So if you go here and you see, check out Scott's deals. These are all discounted things. There's book map, trade room. So I journal my trades, which is awesome. Tick strike, spot gamma, rhythmic. Rhythmic's not a discount, but you see. Um, but anyway, so this is tick strike. So this is just telling me. So this is now go. I've been using this thing for years. I stopped. I stopped using it because he never updated the software for like twelve years, and uh, it just was not up to my up to par as far as I was concerned. But they've they've recently redone it, and they've added all these stocks. So this is just really helpful to see. You know, you can come up with strategies alone just on this stuff. So what this is telling you, this is a meter. You can see this meter avenue set to 11, but it goes from one sensitivity all the way up to 15. So what it does is it takes the size of the orders and the speed of the orders coming in. He's got an algo that shows it. So you can see like Facebook, they're buying heavily Facebook. That's a plus 13. The highest it can go is plus 15. This is really important to know, considering these are the main drivers of these futures, right? Right, it's important to know. So, say like you get into an important area, whatever, whatever you deem important. Right, say it's like a, you know, I, mean, I know most of you guys have 82 things on your chart, but say we come up here and whatever it is, say it's a Bollinger Band or whatever else you guys are using, that it's just hurting your trading. But say it comes up here and none of these are firing off, then you can say, you know what, that's a fade. Or you know, you get your zones, and we come back down here say we come back to the middle of this or to the bottom and none of these are they're not selling anything you can get in at the bottom of the zone right there's so many different strategies you can use but this just helps me know what the stock underlying stocks are doing and then i have what the original way i used to use these right i have these other products right so the way i used to use this is because you can't watch you know 10 markets at one time so i wouldn't i wouldn't know you know, this is before book map and all that but where you had the alerts right now i can i get alerted to at least icebergs and stuff but you wouldn't know if there was some serious activity firing off in these other markets so now i will know based on the sound and you know got different sounds for these for equities versus crude and gold as soon as i hear it i know okay i got to pay attention to crude right or i got to pay attention to gold yeah book map is the number one 
way to do that. But you know, this just helps alert me if these other markets are firing off. So that's what this is. In case you guys are wondering, then you can have the VIX. So, right? so you see a hammer in the VIX. That's a that, which one goes to eleven? I have mine set at eleven, right? So you can. So that means they will not make a sound or light up at least unless it touches eleven. Okay. All right. right. So I can have movie, that movie, movie quote. Yeah. Sorry, this one goes to eleven. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on. Uh, oh. oh well, yeah. well, first very, of all, I can very, see the chat. Very, very serious. Very this serious. Uh, yeah, yeah. Spinal tap. Oh, my God. I don't even think I've ever saw, seen that. Ah, uh, yeah, you might like it. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry to distract. You just showed your age on that one, though. Yeah. That was like a 1980s movie, wasn't it? Yeah. Just show how old you really are. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> There's some other ways you can get out of these trades too, right? And if you don't like the hourly ATR or you say, uh, you know, I don't like waiting for an opposing signal, I just have to get out because it just makes me not feel good. And again, until you can come combat that in your trading, you're never going to make serious money. But this is also important too, right? Liquidity. First of all, liquidity is like a magnet. You guys all know that, right? When you see the liquidity in there, guys that don't know what they're doing think that's uh, like, Oh, I want to be a seller, man. Look at all that size up there. No, it's actually you want to be a buyer because it's eventually going to get to that equity. But the way you can trade this liquidity see, was... is, you know, when it gets up there and it struggles, like you actually would have been out of this one, but say you can even say an ATR. But if it get if it can't get through that liquidity and it fails, you can get out at that point too, right? These are just different options for you to get out of trades. Who are you? Um, you look. No, great. this didn't really move too much below here. What was it about 10 points? Yeah, I went, you know, so you can say when we touch liquidity, once they get their fill, if we go, a, you know, a full ATR below that liquidity, then I'm out, right? I'm just getting it. I'm just giving you other than that, I'm holding it. So that would have been like, for instance, ATR right now is 18. So you say 18 points, I need to see retraced away from that liquidity, and then I get out. Again, I'm just giving you guys different ideas on how to get out if you don't like my method of hourly ATR for half and then waiting for opposing setup. But you see, how much more have I taken from this trade? One, I didn't get scared out when we came close to it earlier. Right? I didn't get algoed. Right? And then I finally got my fill. And two, I'm not saying, man, this has gone up way too much. This this really looks really vertical. I, I don't know. This doesn't feel right. Right? I, I don't care about any of that. I, yeah, if you really think about it, well, this could easily just do this. But then it also can just do that. So what are you going to do? Right? You can't you can't use your Usually, your judgment is the exact opposite of market action, right? That again, that's why most traders don't make it because they they want to use their reasoning skills that they use in the real world for trading, and it's actually usually the opposite. If you read Trading in the Zone or Psychology or uh, what's the other one I'm reading now, Discipline, the Discipline Trader by Mark Douglas, you'll learn that most most people are trying to implement their their mental environment on, in trading. And it, it's exact opposite most times, right? That's why the smartest people on the planet can't trade usually, right? Like your doctors, your lawyers, guys that try to like, when they go to retire, they're like, I wanna, I wanna pick up trading. I'm not gonna, you know, I don't wanna be a doctor anymore. Those guys never make it because they're, they're almost too smart for their own good, right? They, they think they know more than what the market's doing or they're applying their knowledge that they use in the real world in the trading and it doesn't work. It's actually the opposite, so. My point is, you know, you, if you come up with your rules, then you don't have to question every blip. Just, you know, I have my rules. I'm not getting out of this trade until I see an opposing signal. Could it come all the way back? Sure could. That would suck for me. But more than likely, if this thing starts to sell off, I'm, I'm going to get a setup where I can get out of the trade. Right? Yeah, Scott, and actually, this is the way I'm sorry, right? finish up. I did have a question, though. No, no, they're good. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just curious though. Like, uh, um, uh, your thoughts on something like this? Like, um, yeah, a absolutely. This is so true. What you just said, uh, that uh, you know, uh, people try to uh, force their mental model onto the markets. Like, well, I, you know, it hit all these indicators. I study these indicators. It should drop and do this or that or whatever, and they just get run over. Um, uh, hey. However, um, you know, uh, what do you think about like, uh, you, you know, something like on Monday uh, when we saw all those icebergs uh, filled? I mean, it took a while for the for price to turn around. Um, but and it, it what I'm trying to get at here is we knew there were larger players. 
uh, we knew their position and they we knew that they it was price was going against them but they just added more and more and more and I don't think it's one player I think those are many players and I think they're signaling each other uh, as well it's kind of like yeah okay you know I, I know where you're going you know where I'm going let's let's make some money together type type of thing if you can give maybe a little bit of insight on on uh, that comment as far as well, I mean, does, is that true? I mean, do you see that in the industry? Like, uh, um, you know, uh, that uh, uh, larger players, a lot of times, like, I think you can see it with some of those um, hero uh, and uh, spot gamma levels uh, that uh, larger players kind of kind of trip or tick you off to, like, what their positions might be. Um, and that, other, yeah, others kind of get, get that. And you're just like, oh, okay, well, you're there and you're kind of telling me this is where you want to get filled. Um, and uh, I'll, therefore, I'll be a buyer to, to reach your liquidity. Hey, well, that's, we talk about this all the time, talk about it in my room every day. Like, you know, you can sit here and get frustrated at, at the stuff and, you know, say it's manipulated and because it is. Don't get me wrong. These markets are 100% manipulated by the big players, right? 100%. They run the show. That's why the market's always make it to the liquidity, right? Because they make it, make it to the liquidity, right? They're big enough to push these markets around. So you can sit here and you can complain all day long, right? That, oh, the, oh, they run everything. This is all manipulated. It absolutely is. But what I say in my room is if you can't beat them, join them. And that's what this information tells you, right? So, you know, the other day, if you saw all those icebergs coming in, or you can sit there and complain just to say you were short or you, want, you wanted to be short, you're like, Oh, damn it, man. Like, there's there's 14,000 icebergs here. Man, this sucks. I want to be sure. Or do you just want to join them? Like, why beat your head against the wall trying to be opposite and, and, and impose your beliefs on the market? Like, like Bruce was saying, just join them. If you can't beat them, you're not going to beat them unless you can throw around, you know, 10,000 lots, right? If you can't beat them, join them. So, again, there's so many, especially when, you know, my trading firm, when, the algos really took over and guys couldn't make money anymore and it was just their whole mo out me included was you know this is all fixed this is a complete scam it's you know it's manipulated you can't make money right and that was before book map tools right and I, and it, that's exactly what it is trust me like i said these markets are 100 percent manipulated there is every day spoofing going on even though they're trying to you know stop the spoofing as they say it's still going on so again do you want to do you want to complain and just and fight it or do you want to join them and if, if you understand how to read the big money in here right like with the si indicator with the snakes these sweeps i'll try to get into that i'm gonna get off here shortly but we'll get into this briefly you know knowing this stuff you can join them you don't have to sit there and, and try to beat them join them right because they run the show the big money runs the show so to segue into this right so this is not a setup down here this was only 200 icebergs but you can see here look how look how many swipe down here so you see this so what this is showing you it's showing you the passive side of the order um this is the sweeps indicator you get this uh bruce said if you get this if you're a uh, uh global, global plus. plus yeah yeah right um this is alone like i was showing my room the other day like the difference in the pricing between global and global plus it's like 40 bucks a month I mean, for the just for this alone, right? So first of all, Global Plus, you get the, the advanced webinars that are, you know, ninety percent of them are for Global Plus users. But just to get this one indicator alone, it's worth forty bucks more a month, guys. Like what I was telling my room, like if you can't afford forty bucks for this kind of information, then you, you you shouldn't be trading anyway, right? You don't have the money to be trading, which is fine. I'm not I'm not dissing you for not having the money to trade, but you know, you've got to know where you want to allot your money and what's worth the price and what's not. That is definitely worth forty dollars more a month for the pro, pro trader webinars or the, um, the you know the advanced webinars and just again for the sweep this new sweep thing that I wish I had been using a lot sooner than this. This is well worth it, right? So you can see here because not every every setup is going to be down here, and we're we're coming up with ways to, to take advantage of these setups. One, I know these thresholds are way more than than the um, the iceberg thresholds I have. They just seem to be way more for to be market affecting, right? So, for instance, you see somebody dropped in a bomb, you see that big sell bubble, and somebody absorbed twelve hundred contracts over th this price range, right? So you can make these zones like you do with the. Uh, again, I haven't started doing it yet. Um, but I'm eventually going to because I see how powerful these are too. You can see somebody dropped in huge sell orders from, and they weren't stop runs, right? From 20, 2375 
all the way down to 2225. So somebody just dropped in a boatload of sell orders there. Somebody absorbed them. So once again, it's not the intention that's important. Who, who's right? The guy that swiped them or the guy the guys that that absorbed them, right? The white, I use black and white. White is the buy side, meaning buy absorption. Black is sell side absorption. So who's right? Well, you don't know until it moves out of the area, right? So you can literally start drawing zones based on, let's draw this zone. Again, I'm not trading off of these yet because I, I was going to spend this weekend uh, going through these thresholds to come up with the right thresholds for each market, kind of like I did with the SI indicator. Um, but you can, let's just make this a different color. Let's make this, there you go. This will be the sweeps, the sweeps zone. <clears throat> so you can trade this just like you do a SI indicator setup, right? From what I've been seeing, I've been watching this now for a couple weeks, right? So you can wait. So say, for instance, you were long, right? And then you see this and you see it get, the, the minute it gets below this, you can just get out right there. You can use this as one of your one of your exit strategies, right? We've been talking about all day how I exit, right? I may eventually incorporate sweeps as an exit strategy, meaning they sweep the book and say, if we get a half ATR below there, I'm out, right? And these are just different options for you guys with this incredible information. Um, or you can trade, say, you don't have any position on, you can say, you know what, I want to be short. I know Scott said this was a really important area. I haven't seen an SI setup, right? This is an extremely important area where this market can stop, right? Boom, boom. We didn't even get up it here, but get up to it there. Here and here. This is somewhere this, and we've gone straight there. This is definitely somewhere this market could pause. You can say, okay, there's no SI indicator setups. All the big guys are on, they left for Christmas. I'm gonna use this sweep zone to get short. So you can play it the same way. Wait for a full ATR, retest failure, get short. You can put your stop right above there, half ATR above there, right? So you, this is still important. This is just a different way of looking. You know, we have the SI indicator stuff, but you know, this is still orders that came in the book. Someone got ran over, someone was aggressive, someone got ran over. That area is important, right? So I highly recommend you guys get the, the Global Plus and get this on your, because this is, Again, I'm just, I'm just touching, scratching the surface with this thing. Now, I'm going to come up with a whole new, whole new, you know, setups and everything else. That's why we're already naming them like Black Mamba, and I have Python and a couple other ones. But it's a work in progress. But I know this stuff is just as important with, not, with the right, with, with the right thresholds as the SI indicator. <laughs>sweeps or stops right we just looked at one and es was not a stop run this one was Sellers were absorbing the buying. The stop run, there was a buy stop run that just ran over these guys. Right? It just really helps you draw the zones too. Stop, 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 buy alert at CL 225 contracts. Right, here's another one. I'm sure off this one, but you know, we have a new setup. See, you can just literally go right to where the black dot started and where it ended. There you go. Can you hear me now, Scott? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um, uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to comment on this. This is why, I mean, so you guys understand what we're doing here. Um, uh, 
there's a couple different offerings. There's Global and Global Plus. Global Plus does not have all these proprietary, or Global does not have all these proprietary indicators we developed. Um, it, that's part of the Global Plus. That's the main difference between the two. Um, and if you want those, uh, like the sweep indicator, uh, you, you got to subscribe to Global Plus. Uh, now, the heat map and the volume dots, etc., if you want the cheaper version, then you go with Global. Uh, if you don't want those indicators, and you're not trying to upsell you on this stuff. I'm just trying to explain, like, we spent a lot of time developing these things, um, and, uh, you know, they're proprietary. You're not going to see these on other platforms. Uh, so uh, that's the difference in the pricing here uh, if you want the access to it. Uh, you know, uh, just uh, don't get bitter about the, the pricing. Um, uh, it takes some, some effort on our part to develop these things. So uh, not trying to, uh, you know, uh, uh, upsell you or rip you off or anything like that. But it does give in additional insight as Scott is going through here. Um, we're getting to the point where we can, we can zoom into these levels and we can see unbelievable transparency. If you want that, then go for, you know, something more like Global Plus. And, and that's my main point. Hey, I'm not trying to sell anything. I have no, I have no, there's no bearing on me <laughs> whether you have Global or Global Plus. I'm, t I'm telling you, as a trader, for this information, it's definitely worth $40 more a month. It doesn't matter to me either way what you do. I'm not selling anything book map. I, you know, just telling you about like it is. And if you if you can't afford 40 bucks a month, then you probably shouldn't be trading for this kind of information is what I'm telling you. This is, this is incredible. And the more I get into it, there's going to be whole new doors open for setups and stuff like that. But... All right, so this one here, um, you know, we had this stop run here, the yellow zone. We saw that, and I just drew this one. This was another 225. So now I'm waiting for an ATR above or below the zone, and I will go long or short. So ATR is 18.4, so round it up to 19. All right, so I want to see 19 ticks above here, which would put me at, uh, what were we at, let's say 61. That puts me at 80. Retest test failure, I'll get in three quarters of an ATR there to go long, or I'll do it on the short side. Again, this is the most recent setup, so I will play off of that. Um, I wasn't going to play off this one, but this happened after, so I'm playing off that one. So we'll see what happens with that. We still haven't retested this zone in ES. If we do, I will go long. So this is a good example right here, right? So do you see right here what I was just saying? So here, I mean, this was technically... This is, a nice, this is a setup. I don't know why I didn't read it off. I have it at 700, that's why. But so when you look at this on chart, that's what I was trying to point out to you guys before. You see a thousand there. You're like, wow, this is a thousand right there. Well, yeah, I mean, this is condensed pretty much because it just happened, but this could be, this could have went through. So say the market did this, touched it, touched it, touched it, touched it, touched it over two hours, right? Well, it would eventually say E save like 4,000. Well, does that mean there was 4,000 icebergs right there? And then, no, it just means, I'm talking about the on chart, it just means that someone, it was one house. That's not market moving information. I want a condensed area, and that's what this shows you, right? So this is actually a new setup. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get rid of the sweeps right now because I just wanted to show you that I'm not trading off that information yet. I am trading off of this information. So you see... Again, it's almost 700. That's threshold basically for me. 700 to 685. And then you had another 300. And you can see it on chart. It was one house, right? So I'm going to incorporate all those prices. That so went from there down to. Change the color here too. That was here. So that's that bias that just came in. Right. So this did just retest this old zone, and I was going to get long off that, but this is something new that came in. So now I'm going to trade off this. Right. So I still now have to wait for a ATR retest. But does it suck? Yeah. But this is the newest information that came in. I'm not going to ignore this. Right. I, I want to. I want to trade off the newest information. So I want to see us move an ATR away from this zone now. Retest fail. And I'll go long. And you can do that. I'm going to do the same thing on the short side, depending on what happened happens here right because this is the newest setup kind of just like we saw with crew i'm trading off the newest information the newest workflow that just came in 
not not a zone that happened you know an hour ago. <clears throat> not that it's not still not important, and it is more size. This black zone was a lot more size. Um, but if this is you know technically, if this remains bullish, which it looks like it's going to, then this should be bullish as well. Again, this is how it's how you want to trade this. If you say, oh, well, we retested that the minute we get out of this one. I will go long, half ATR, I'll go long. I don't need to see a retest of this one because I know we just retested this old one and failed. You can do that. Again, that's your prerogative as a trader. You need to figure out, but you need to be consistent, right? You know, before I was doing this experiment with my room, I definitely would have just jumped in here. Once I saw the retest of this black zone, the failure, and then the newest stuff, once it got just above there, half ATR, I would have definitely been in. But I, this is the newest setup. I'm going to wait just like I was waiting for this one to retest. Right? Hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> um, all right, so gold never really got out of the zone. De definitely never got an ATR out of here. Waiting for that. Crude still in its most recent zone. Waiting for that. NASDAQ still in this trade. Nothing's come in. We have a couple sweeps here, but snakes, as I call them. Tell you this is going to open up a whole new window for setups. But I just have to, I have to go back and practice and look at them. And that's another great thing about Bookmap. But I tell you guys every day, you have such power at your fingertips with this information. But then you can go back and replay the day and practice. And say, okay, I'm going to just trade off snakes. What what did it look like if I took you know just trades off the snakes? How would I would how would I have done? What did it look like if I took just setups off the SI indicator? You can do all that. You can replay the day. Right. And my room members, that, you know, because the stuff does wear on your computer when you save a bunch of your files, or you can save them to a Google Drive, or in my room, you, you have, they have access to the Google Drive of all my days with all my products for all of 2021. So you, all you got to do is bring, bring up a random day and trade. And, and trade. you can trade the snakes, as I call them, trade the setups, whatever you want. And that's how you get good. This is, guys, this is just like any other profession. If you want to play, this is just like playing a professional sport, right? You're going against the brightest minds on the planet. So it might behoove you to practice your trading and your setups to confirm, you know, if they work or not. Right? So if you're, if you're going to try to play Major League Baseball, are you just going to walk out on the field and, and face a guy throwing 98? You think you're going to get a hit? No chance. That's the same with this. You think you're just going to bring up your charts, throw up some zones and start trading them and think you're going to be successful? Very, I mean, if you follow my exact system, yeah, but there's going to be times where you're going to be questioning it and stuff like that. You got to go back for yourself and put these on and practice. Prove to yourself, too, where you're not getting out of stuff and getting algoed and faked out by the moves and you trust it, right? But yeah, if you follow these zones and trade them like I'm telling you how I'm trading them right now, wait for retest failures and it's conservative, wait for hourly ATR to get out or an opposing signal, you, you will make money, right? But you'll do even better the more you practice this stuff. Yeah, this is a really good point, Scott, if I can just jump in for, for a minute. I mean, this is, it's so funny because uh, you, you realize that the moment you came to Bookmap, um, you, you, you came to some of the advanced webinars, you asked questions uh, and, uh, uh, you know, for a few weeks. And then like, uh, I didn't see you. I, I showed you the replay mode. I was like, here, you, you know, this is how you can, you can record your data and you can replay it and uh, 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 learn from this. Uh, and, uh, and then, and then you just disappeared for like three weeks or a month or something. And like, uh, and, right. and you resurfaced with a course, uh, you know, you'd put together right. like a course basically. Uh, and, um, uh, uh, you know, you studied it, uh, and, 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 stop, and you showed it an edge and advantage, uh, from your studies. Uh, no, no one really does this. They just show up again at the markets every day and, and a lot of retail traders and they just start randomly trading. Um, uh, there is right. no edge. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an under um, uh, u utilized uh, feature in Bookmap is that replay mode. Record your record your data, guys. Uh, come back and uh, re re uh, replay the days. Uh, you can record your trades as well and put them in there. Uh, so uh, re very, very powerful tool uh, to, to use. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, con consider that one. It's incredible. I mean, again, if you're not doing that, then you're, I mean, you're behind, you're, you're behind the, behind the eight ball. 
because you're not, you know, you, you got you to gotta get to a point where you trust this stuff without any, any questions, right? So, and that's how you do it. You go in and just replay the day. And again, that's how you determine how you want to play them, too. You, you could say, I want to be an aggressive trader. If I just took these zones aggressively, as speaking of which, quickly, um, I, now here's a new setup, right? Now a half ATR below here, I'm out of this one line. That's how I traded. You see how I stayed in this trade the entire time? 16 and a half, so we'll say 17 points. So half of that, I'll round up to, well, we'll go half of that. We'll go eight and a half points. So eight and a half points below here. Puts me at 03. I'm out. If it comes down to 03, then what will I do? Okay, I put it on the right side there. I'm very proud of myself. So I'm not adding to my trade when I want to get out. So say I get, say this comes down, stops me out. Okay, I'm out of this trade. Great trade from this morning. And then what will I do? I'll wait for a full ATR, 18 points. If this retest and this fails, then I'll go short. Or what else will I do here? I will add to this trade. This goes a full ATR above here. Retest fails. I will put on two more or four more, depending on my risk here. I could probably put on four now because this risk is not very... Again, and that's the whole other thing I'm not going to get into right now, but <clears throat> you know, members of my room, they came up with this or they helped me develop this. Um, so you can use this as, you know, you got to determine your, you can't overtrade your account, right? So, you know, if you have a $10,000 account, just these are just micro contracts, right? Same contract. So if I'm risking, you know, 30 points on a, on a NASDAQ trade, I could put on three big ones or three micros if my account's only 10,000. If you're over trading, that's the number one thing. How you are not going to make it in this game. So let's just see here quickly. 17. So this zone is about six points, five and a half points, right? And then I would have to risk um, a half or three quarters of an ATR. So we're saying uh, 18, nine, so like 12 points. 12 points more would be my entry. So what did I say this was uh, five and a half. So that's 17 and a half points. And then my stop would be half ATR. My entry would be three quarters of an ATR plus the size of the zone plus a half ATR below here. Um, five and a half, 13 and a half, and then another eight, right? Or nine. So 22 and a half points would be the total risk on this trade, right? So then you just come over here. I can actually put on more than that, I think. 20, yeah, I could put on four, just like I thought, 22 and a half points. And once you do this enough, you're going to pretty much know, but it's 22 and a half. I could put on a four lot here, whatever way this trades, right? That is the number one thing you, you guys need. If you don't have that spreadsheet, again, you can get in my room. If not, Google, find a way to get a risk spreadsheet going because if you're over trading your account, you're going to blow out. If you have a $10,000 account and you're trading normal normal e-mini contracts, you're not. I don't care if it's a one, you're not going to make it. You cannot over trade your account size. You have a couple bad days, your account is done. So again, I'm waiting for 18 points above here, retest failure, 18 points below here, retest failure to go short. I will put out what's stopped out of that, and then I'll enter a short, depending. I was going to tell you guys something else, too. I forgot. Uh, crude, what just happened here? Well, this was a dumb and dumber, right? Now I'll go short. Here's your stop run. We had this stop run first, then you had this one. This is the newest one. Did we get an ATR below here? Sure did. ATR is... 18.7, so we're saying 19 ticks. Bottom of the white zone was at 52. We got down to 31, would have been an ATR. We're at 29. So how will I trade this now? I the way I'm trading these conservatively, I'm waiting for a retest, then a failure, then three quarters of an ATR I will be in, even though it'll be right in the middle of the zone. That's fine because this happened after. Um, and then I'll be short. Will I go long this setup now? No, because we violated this to the downside in ATR. So this this is no longer a possible long setup because we violated this. So then this is a dumb and dumber. Stop, run, puke, no follow through by the big money, failure. So I'm hoping it does this. Crude does it out of any market out there. 90% of the time it will retest the zone, but sometimes it won't. That's what I keep telling you guys. You got to determine how you want to trade these. You want to get in aggressively the minute it breaks, fine. Just be consistent. And this is why you want to go back and practice to see what suits you best and what you think works better. Or you wait for the retest failure. <clears throat> and that's what I'm going to wait for here. Just if I can, Scott, um, uh, you know, jump in here since, you know, we're streaming here in, in Discord and it's free and open to all. Um, there's some questions about your trading style, etc. Uh, one of the things that um, I, I just want to kind of reiterate, and um, 
uh, to those that are new in here. The way Scott is trading here uh, and, and looking at this is he's looking at multiple markets. So he's got like, I don't know, 10, 15, 18 markets open, something like that. Uh, and then he's looking for an event to occur. In this case, stops and icebergs. Uh, and then he'll go in and look at uh, the uh, kind of bigger picture and also the order flow. Uh, does this now look like a good setup? Uh, and uh, because the event has occurred, uh, he knows from his studies the event is what he's looking for. Therefore, he can trade as many markets as he wants. He doesn't need to focus on the S&P all day long, for example. Uh, and right. uh, th this is kind of the setup here. It's a little bit in reverse uh, in essence, uh, but is the event, the event that matters. Uh, and then he'll, he'll uh, home in there and look at that event and it's like, okay, do I see an edge here? Right, and you're doing yourself an extreme injustice to service if you're just staring at one market, especially if you're staring at the crappy ES all day long. You want to have multiple markets up, so when one market is, is doing nothing, instead of just being algoed all day, you can move to another market, right? So a lot of times there's nothing going on, but then something will be firing off in grains, right? So then I move over to grains. You guys, it doesn't matter what market it is. Volume is volume, and these setups are, they work across the board in any one of these markets. Silver, soybeans, wheat. Um, bonds, you know, you got it. You need the thresholds, and that's what my, you know, you can figure them out yourself. Go back and study, or that's what my course shows you. Natural gas, copper, you know, it's like it, it's across the board. And any any futures market that you want to watch, as long as you know your thresholds, this it's the same stuff. It's the same patterns. It's it's markets reacting to real time volume, and in this case, what we're using the real time volume input from the SI indicator, right? So that's that's it that's what you're doing you know it seems very simplistic guys for the thousandth time real-time volume is what drives these markets not 45 lines on your chart and lines mean nothing unless there's real-time volume there to support that area or reject the area right like not i'm not saying stuff is not important right so like you know i have the stuff i, I don't use that much stuff because i try not to confuse myself um, but you know i'll use market profile like here's the top of a market profile right here. We're kind of getting to the NASDAQ. Like, yeah, that's important, but it's not really important unless anything fires off there, right? It's like th this is what I'm trying to show you guys. Or here we're extreme standard deviation or VWAP. That's important. It's way more important if you get a real-time signal there, right? And these are Ludwig levels we use in the room. Um, those are incredible too, but they're only, she even says it, you don't trade them in a vacuum. You don't trade any of this stuff in a vacuum. What's the, the separator of, of these areas? It's the real-time volume. So if you, it, you know, people just don't grasp it. They don't think it's that important. And it's the number one important thing out there because the markets don't move unless there's real time volume transacting in those areas, right? And this helps you, like I said, if you can't beat them, join them. You can see exactly what's going on. You can see, if you watch enough of these, you can say, well, what should happen? If, if paper is very interested in buying right here, paper meaning the big money, the big banks, the big funds, they see the same, same information. You don't think they have their quants that disseminate the CME MBO data? They have this information too. They're mad that we have it. I guarantee it. They can't be happy about it. But now we're on the same playing field. So it behoove you to know, hey, okay, there's a stop run. Would the real money jump up and keep pushing it? Because the big money sees the same thing. If they're they're that interested in buying right here, they would have just this is their this is their you know green light. Okay, here's a big puke. Let's just jump on and keep pushing it. Did they jump on and keep pushing it? No, instant failure. That's very important information to know. Right? It's the information to know. All right, so we're getting close to retest failure here, or retest, there's your retest of the zone. Again, crude, number one, 90% of the time, it'll come back to the zone. Here's your zone, here's your retest. Do I just jump in now? No, now I wait for it to, because this can go right back through here. But the likelihood of that happening is not real good because why well, didn't it do it the first time? That's the way I look at it. So now if this comes back, three quarters of an ATR, I will be short this market. So again, ATR is 18. So half of 18 is nine. And half of that is four and a half. So add those together, 13 and a half. And there's no half ticks in here. So we'll say 14, 14 ticks below this zone. I am short. Bottom of this zone is, we'll say 52. In between there, but it's closer to 52. So 14 ticks below there is 38. That's where I will go short. And it's good because it's right below this first zone too. I like that. I don't like shorting in the prior zone, in the middle of the prior zone. So if I get filled on this, 
short. Now my stop will go half ATR, so nine ticks above here. And then I'll let this work, and I'll hold it the same way you saw me hold the NASDAQ trade. Speaking of which, did I get stopped out? Nope, not yet. Still in the zone, and I could add to this trade. So that's how I'm trading it. <clears throat> and that's all I do all day long. You just wait for your setups in each market, the markets you're watching, and you trade them. It doesn't matter if it's crude, if it's silver, or if it's beans. It's all the same stuff. It's volume. It's traders that are caught in a certain area. You're trading the area. Whoever was right, whoever was wrong. That's what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. All right, first, I'm, uh, I'm out of gas. Any other questions? No, that was that was good, though. Um, that was a good rant. Um I don't. I mean, it's like uh, I know you're. I can hear you. You know, when you first came on, you're sick. You don't have much energy, but uh, man, it's impressive. You you pick it up and uh, uh, wow. Um, uh, <laughs> you're running out of gas. And uh, anyway, uh, thank thank you, Scott. And uh, I hope you feel better. Everyone's saying in here like um, uh, uh, Merry Christmas and and thank you. So um, uh, you know we'll. Uh, uh, we'll take a break here, uh, and uh, and and I don't know if we're going to do next week or not. Actually, we might just take the the week off uh, on webinars. Uh, anyway, we'll we'll think about it, um, and uh, yeah, put your feelers in here, guys, of what you guys think. But uh, uh, might as well. There's not going to be a whole lot going on. I, I don't think. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be in my room. I'm not taking any time off, so okay. Want to do it? I'll do one. If not, okay. not a big deal. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll just do uh, you know uh, your webinar, maybe J Traders webinar. Uh, we'll, we'll take we'll take a look here uh, and and figure it out. We'll let you guys know. Uh, so uh, we may even do it in here again next week. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, free and open to all. Not not sure, not sure how we're gonna how how we're gonna do it. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, thanks again, Scott, uh, and uh, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Thanks, guys. I hope you learned something today. That's the whole point, to learn how to do this yourself. I'll see you guys uh, next week. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Why is it?